For almost the past year, I've used this Acer Aspire E15 laptop for my daily driver needs. And for the most part, aside from, you know, obviously the processor and this thing being the bottleneck of the system, it's otherwise actually been surprisingly capable. And it's not been the worst machine ever. I mean, it's got a 1080p display, it's got dedicated graphics, DDR4 RAM, a decent touchpad, good enough battery life to get the job done, that sort of stuff. But there's always been some few things lacking about it that I, you know, it just kind of got to me after a little while, particularly the CPU. And so, it was about time that I finally made an upgrade. And that upgrade, aside from the awfully flickery display you're looking at right now, that's just something to do with the camera, is this machine right here. This HP Pavilion Gaming Walmart Special, which I got off of Facebook Marketplace, of course, because why not? So, I'm making an upgrade. So I want to talk about it. So if I sound like I'm dying in the background, believe me, that's not intentional. It's just because I have the AC off right now because it's otherwise flipping hot in this room. But I just want to, you know, obviously have you all be able to hear me and it makes it easier for me to edit later, especially audio levels. So let's discuss the new laptop. Why did I upgrade to what I have now versus what I was using previously? which there's nothing wrong with this machine previously, you know, as a daily driver. Like I said, it was doing the job just fine. There was a few different little nitpicks about it that really kind of got to me after a little while, but really it's nothing that would affect the you know, usability of this machine, even if I were to still have it right now. Now, my biggest thing is the processor. This has a Core i5-6200U, which is a two-core, four-thread processor, and it's good for what it was. You know, obviously this was a 2015 laptop. These were still in the days when AMD didn't have their uh, Ryzen architecture. So obviously the transition for, in this case, fifth gen to sixth gen really wasn't even that much for Intel, especially on mobile. And when you come to think about it, the i7-5600U compared to the i5-6200U, the i7 was barely any better than this i5. So yes, obviously Skylake was better at its IPC, but it still wasn't that great. And obviously the integrated graphics were better, yes, and they still get driver updates today. I believe sixth gen still does. But besides the point, uh, it just wasn't that much faster of a machine. But I guess that depends on whether you believe the architecture was better than still being stuck with the same core counts over and over again until of course, you know, I think it was Coffee Lake when mobile finally got a core bump at least for the i5s. Anyways, I digress. So here we are. This is the machine that is now being replaced. And you know, the CPU was doing fine for like daily tasks and things. And I could still obviously browse the web, watch YouTube in high definition and do photo editing, albeit slowly, but it would work. And multitasking was getting a little bit tiresome, but it was still doable. And obviously I upgraded the memory. So this thing has dual channel memory now instead of single channel memory on like that thing over there for the moment. So it was definitely more usable, but it's just something about it's just pokey. I have no idea what it is. I'm blaming the processor because again, it's from 2015. It's just two cores and four threads and the SSD is not remarkable, but I've seen this particular model of SSD perform better in a older but faster performing laptop and it's definitely more capable. So it's just gotta be something with this system. I have no idea what's holding it back, but other than the CPU, of course. And the graphics, that's another point to talk about because it is still technically getting driver updates from Nvidia, which is great. Obviously, I don't know how much longer that's gonna last because it is five years old at this point because the 940M and 940MX series of GPUs came out about 2015 slash 16. They were kind of inside of these budget laptops that are still actually fairly thin and light and still very capable of getting the you know, the bag job done. You know, if you put these things into a laptop bag or a backpack, you can still easily fit them in there, but at least you'd have something that's more powerful than the integrated graphics. And then in this case, it has its own dedicated two gigabytes of GDDR5 graphics memory, along with the uh, matte 1920 by 1080 LCD. In this case, it's not exactly the most fantastic. It's just a TN panel, it's not IPS, but hey, you still have the resolution, which is nice. So. It definitely held up for that, but honestly, the GPU these days is, it's not necessarily a display adapter. It still has some grunt to it for especially older games or the lighter games that come out, but the VRAM is low 
the performance really isn't that great these days even a flipping 1030 would probably be faster than this laptop's dedicated graphics certainly faster than the integrated graphics i'll give it that and really the only thing that i had going for this machine in addition was the ability to output 4k at 60 hertz this is probably the lowest end of lowest end laptops from that generation, give or take, that we could actually do 4K60 output. And I'm not sure if that's because of the Intel graphics or the NVIDIA graphics. I would assume the Intel graphics because you have to do it through the Intel control panel. But this can output 4K at 60 hertz. It's a bit of a pain in the butt to get it to do it, but it will do it. So that's why I hung on to this thing because, you know, obviously I could use it on the television at home. But... And there's some other things, too, that I wanted to talk about, not just the CPU and the GPU, of course, which I've rambled on for about five minutes now. So I better switch it up a bit here. So obviously, the webcam is eh, its a potato. It really is. And then the microphone really isn't even that much better, let's be fair. Uh, Acer's never really had a good, strong suit of good quality webcams. And let's be fair, neither has HP. But at least the HP one's more tolerable than this thing. This one look, just literally looks like a potato. And it's so bad, I don't even want to show it on the video. And then another thing too, and this isn't necessarily an issue with this machine, but you know, the keyboard, it's okay. It actually types pretty well for what it is, but I feel like this thing started to develop something that really irritated me with my old Latitude E5470 I used to have, which some longer time viewers of my channel would probably know I used to own one as my daily driver laptop. And I even edited video on it at a point of time because I didn't have a Mac to actually edit video with, so I was stuck on PC. Well, you know, core two duos, but you know, anyways. So I think this thing's starting to develop this issue where it starts missing my keystrokes. And I'm not sure how it develops. Maybe this keyboard is slowly starting to wear out or something of that nature. But I feel like this thing, as I'm trying to write stuff, it just does not enjoy typing all of my keystrokes. It just sometimes misses a letter. Sometimes it doesn't space. I don't know. Something's weird about it. But you go back and you fix it. And it's fine. But, you know, it, it shouldn't have to deal with that sort of stuff. I'm not sure if it's just the way I type. But... You know, it's starting to develop that sort of thing. So, you know, maybe it's just something to do with this being a mid-range Acer. And it was already used and beat up when I got this thing anyway, uh, almost a year ago. So I guess I can't be too hard on it. And of course, uh, the battery's starting to degrade. So it lasts like maybe four hours on a charge, which is still okay. You can still use that. But obviously, the way that Windows reports this battery life... Whoops, I didn't even hit the thing properly. I mean... Actually, I was wrong, about five hours. So, I mean, it's still pretty good. I mean, this probably would have had more battery life when it was new, but you start doing something like watching YouTube on the battery and it immediately tanks to like two and a half hours. So, you know, <laughs> it's starting to show its age in some ways. And I don't know, it's just time to get a better machine. And especially, you know, I found it weird. Like I'm using Word, putting in images and trying to format them. And this thing just struggles to do. Anyways, I'm done rambling about the CPU and the GPU and uh, whatnot. I actually did have one last nitpick. I almost can't believe I forgot about this. The charger for this Acer is a, it's just, why? Now, obviously I didn't care about this when I first got the laptop, but over time I've just, I've noticed this. The charger, oh my God, the charger, it's this thin like mouse cord thickness of wire and that carries 65 watts to the laptop. It literally, it's no thicker than a mouse cord wire. And it's like this really, really thin wire, not a lot of insulation around it. And the insulation has tended to not be so durable. So I've had to electrical tape a little bit of it. I had to do that when I first got the laptop anyways, because not only was the charger, you know, looking like it had been chewed up a little bit by an animal of some kind, probably a dog, but it's, it's seen some love marks on the lid, particularly around here. Like there's some scuffs in the lid. And this is plastic, by the way, this is not an aluminum lid like some of the fancier models. But this is all, like, scratched and, you know, <laughs> so for plastic, that makes sense, I guess. And then over here, there's some more scuff marks and whatever. And the hinges are definitely uh, stiff, so it takes a good little bit. And I even think, no, it's not really bowed out in the middle, but uh, still. And the speakers aren't the best. They did okay, but, you know, they're not very loud, and the audio software is not the best either. So really, I mean, this was a carryover machine, really, from the E5470 days, as well as the, um, what other machines that I have in the meantime between then and this, I don't remember. But needless to say, um, it's had its day. I've gotten my money's worth out of this laptop, I feel. It's definitely been through a heck of a lot, even with just me. But, 
it's definitely going to get resold on and it's going to have some easier times with someone else who's going to be uh, shortly after this video, of course, buying this machine if they haven't already. Depends on when I put this up to uh, YouTube and whatnot. So, yeah, that's the probably the last time you'll actually see this Acer Aspire E15. I thought about doing a thing where I would show how well it's aged, like the CPU and the GPU performance, and I could still technically do that, but I just don't have the time. You know, obviously, schoolwork has to take priority and unfortunately there's really not too much that's worth making a video about regarding this machine since like i said by the time that you all are watching this video it will likely already be resold and passed on so i guess that's kind of a farewell to this machine you know obviously um it's bittersweet because you know this machine's not the best but it's been generally my go-to i i really i'm tongue twisting here today sorry about that uh, probably because it's, you know, hot in this room. But, you know, this thing's always been there. And it's always generally worked. So, you know, it is kind of a little... For me, anyway, it's bittersweet. I know this is kind of like your average Joe laptop. You go out and buy for like 600 bucks. But who who really cares, you know? Anyways, let me get on to the final cream to the cream of this video. Why you're actually here to watch after like almost, God, like 11 minutes of me rambling. So, yes, this is the new machine, and annoyingly, you're going to have to deal with the flicker because unlike the Acer, which actually seems to do a pretty good job of hiding the flicker, this one, on the other hand, does not. So if you turn the brightness down, the camera tends to just really badly show the flicker. I don't know what the deal is between these two machines and why the LCD is suddenly flickery on this thing, so I apologize. It's going to probably upset some people in the comments. There's nothing I can do about that. That's just the camera playing tricks with the LCD, and... Honestly, HP screens have always done this, so it's whatever. So yes, I don't see this in real life, this flicker, but this is the new machine. It's way better as far as the specifications go. First of which, the CPU is a Core i5-9300H. So right off the bat, we have two extra cores and four extra threads, which is fantastic. So CPU performance-wise, it's easily double over this thing. You know, I think on pass mark, this thing had like a score of like 3,000 some odd points. And this thing has a score of about 8,000 some odd points. There'll obviously be a screen cap up here to prove me wrong as far as the exact numbers. But you get my point. The HP in this case is much faster. Now, I, I, honestly, I don't really feel like I have a lot of buyer's remorse for this machine. And I want to kind of drill on this a second before I move on. I was really hoping when I was buying a new machine to find something with Ryzen 4000 series in it for a laptop. Because... Really, the laptop space has been kind of dry with core counts. And I know that only recently that just managed to change with Intel Coffee Lake and then uh, 9th Gen and 10th Gen, I forget the names of, and then soon to be 11th Gen, because I think 11th Gen literally just came out like recently as of the making of this video. And I think that one was Tiger Lake, don't quote me on that. But it came with a whole new logo change, Intel, Iris, Z Graphics integrated and all that fancy stuff. But no, I honestly, for the moment... And considering the price that I paid for this machine and local availability of brand new laptops, in a nutshell right now, at least for me, I don't really feel much buyer remorse, especially considering that this thing is faster than this thing. So, you know, it'll do the job for now. And uh, obviously, it'll hopefully do the job for at least a year, maybe a little bit longer. We'll see how well this thing ages over time. It should do better than obviously this thing because it has more physical CPU cores and way better discrete graphics. But I'll get onto that here shortly. So... There is a weak point to this machine, and it's not the CPU, obviously, because I just drilled in on that. Uh, it's the RAM. This is a Walmart special, so unfortunately, this came brand new from HP to Walmart and other like, potential places like the internet with only 8 gigabytes of RAM. You might be thinking, well, that's not awful for a budget gamer laptop. Well, it is, because it's a single stick of RAM. And if you know your Intel's, that means single channel memory. Well, it's also the same thing for AMD too, especially nowadays. So yes, it only has single channel memory, which it's again, not the worst in the world. It will still certainly do the job. It's a 2666 megahertz, eight gig stick. I've been underneath this machine already to put in another uh, SSD. So it's fine, but definitely not for the long term. I do plan on upgrading the memory in this machine in the future to at least 16 gigs. And I think that's really all I'm gonna need. And before you ask, no, I'm not taking the RAM out of that. It's getting sold with 16. So that's that. So obviously this machine is going to get its own uh, memory upgrade in the future. I'm probably just going to go with Crucial Memory because that's the brand that I've been most familiar with and the one that I've bought memory from in the past directly. 
and it's always been high quality stuff gets the job done so i think that's what i'm going to do i think this machine is actually compatible with like i want to say 3000 megahertz i could be wrong it might support different speeds i swear i think that's what crucial had listed on their website it was like a 3000 or 3200 megahertz kit again i'll prove myself wrong on the screen in front of you all to make myself look like an idiot for not doing research beforehand but i've had a long day so cut me some slack really i did i had a really busy lab so please <laughs> again proving myself on the screen like really give me some slack on not having details in here i always try to put that in my videos because people think i'm a lazy douche well no i'm not really like believe me i have a life outside of youtube anyways tangent over <laughs> i swear sometimes i have to do that because people don't listen they don't read descriptions well i don't even really put descriptions in my videos sometimes because i forget anyways back to the video Yes, I apologize. I tend to ramble a lot, so forgive me. If you got turned off by this video because of that, I apologize. Obviously, you haven't watched enough of my videos. So, yes, RAM upgrade is going to happen in the future. Now, moving on, uh, the SSD is NVMe, which is actually really cool because I've never really had a laptop that has had an NVMe drive pre-installed. This machine over here actually has an NVMe M.2 slot thing underneath the bottom cover. It never shipped with one brand new, or at least in this configuration that... Acer shipped out it never came with one this one came with a one terabyte 5400 rpm hard drive brand new and the nvme m.2 whatever you prefer to call it this week slot was never used but it's it's still in there it's just not occupied but i've obviously just stuck in a sata ssd because that was cheaper but this one actually came brand new with a pre-installed 256 gig m.2 ssd and it's one of those sk hynix bc501 series and it's a pretty quick SSD, I'm not going to lie. Like, it's actually surprisingly zippy. So, which is, that's good. Because, you know, obviously, uh, NVMe drives are known for being really fast. And also rather reliable and low latency, which is fantastic. And what's nice about this machine, too, is it has an extra 2.5-inch uh, SATA bay. Now, obviously, I took out the blank. This is what the blank looks like that was sitting inside that slot. And it had two mounting pieces mounted to the side of it. And... I stuck in my old Samsung 860 Evo 500 gig SSD into this laptop so I'd have something to put games and other relative files onto. It already had almost four terabytes of data written to it, so I figure this machine can take the used SSD, although it really wasn't all that badly worn. It's just starting to like, you know, have some write cycles put into it, but nothing insane. So it can have it can have that SSD. And then if I want to have another SATA SSD for a game drive for my main desktop that I've built recently. Well, not really built, but bought and kind of upgraded and redone some things on. If you want to be more proper about the term, then I can just go and buy another SSD from a retailer of my choice. So that's, you know, obviously a good thing. Now, here's the spot that I'm pretty sure is going to be a little bit of eh about. But I mean, for me, you might have already noticed on the sticker there. The discrete graphics are only, and I say only with sparingly uh, used quote marks, a GeForce GTX 1050. Now, this one is the later released version. It has three gigabytes of GDDR5 video memory versus the standard 1050s, two gigs of GDDR5. So it's got an extra gig of video memory going for it, which is nice. And so it definitely helps some games run a little bit easier than others, although it's still a 1050. But really, I haven't noticed much about this machine that's really prevented it from running really anything at 60 FPS, at least so far, other than the single channel memory bottlenecking the processor which makes games like Forza Horizon 4 not run so good, although they can still hit 60 frames per second, but really it starts to choke, and so you notice dropouts in the music and some, some other uh, little lag spikes when you're in the loading screens. So definitely memory performance needs to be addressed, but GPU-wise, for now, it's fine. I can run games at reduced settings at 1080p or probably 1600 by 900 most likely in some other AAA titles and easily keep 60 frames per second or that nature. So that's a good thing. Um, but we'll see how that 1050 ages. It certainly will age better than this 940 MX over here, which barely can even play GTA 5 at 30 frames a second on this laptop. But honestly, I can't fault the GPU for only being able to do that much because the CPU is so flippin' slow that you can't really play online games on this thing without it choking the CPU. Wow, fantastic. You know, that's the magic of dual-core processors from 2015 in a nutshell. Thanks, Intel, for your consistent innovation. Anyways, back to this laptop once again, because I'm getting on a tangent again about Intel processors. You can kind of see why I wanted an AMD. <laughs> Anyways, I'm just bullshitting people for bullshitting, because, you know, that's just exactly the kind of thing I feel rage in the comments section on my videos with. So, 
this machine's also got some nice amenities to it too. No DVD drive, but you know, obviously that's kind of dead these uh, these days in the laptops unless you go and buy a Walmart special. It does have a backlit green keyboard, which is actually really nice. And the key switches feel pretty decent. I mean, obviously backlit keyboards, they have the compromise of having a less substantial feel to them. And that's obviously the case here. But honestly, it really doesn't even feel all that bad. Like, I can get the speed pretty quickly. It's not too loud of a key switch. They do have some kind of response to them. But I, I would say, you know, my thing with this laptop is it doesn't really feel as solid as maybe this Acer because this has an aluminum palm rest to it. So it definitely has some more substance to the backing. So it definitely doesn't feel like you're going to break the laptop almost kind of like this one does sometimes when I'm typing on it or at least when I'm typing at a more rapid pace, but it's fine. And it's definitely still got some of the function keys, obviously uh, volume, playback, and brightness. And it's got obviously a control for two stages of uh, backlit uh, levels on the keyboard, whereas this thing didn't even have a backlit keyboard, so this is already a step up. So yeah, it's got this going for it. It's not crazy, but it'll get the job done. Another thing too, and I know that this is kind of uh, debatable whether or not it's actually worth it or not, but it's got a Bang & Olufsen woo, sound system, which actually has some front firing speakers on it, which has this nice uh, hexagonal pattern on it, or hexagonal, however you prefer to you know call your shape term this week. Okay, geometry people. But um, these sound okay. They definitely sound better than this machine. They're definitely louder. Uh, I wouldn't say on the low end they're fantastic, but neither were these, so, you know, you really can't complain there too much. But headphone performance is where this thing actually does pretty well. It sounds better than this thing because there's a lot of uh, audio processing and compression on the Acer compared to what it was on this HP. There's a weird thing, though, and I've noticed this, and I'm really not sure how it's going to sit with me over time, but it should be fine for now because it really doesn't drive me nuts like it did with my Latitude E5470, but... I've noticed that sometimes with Windows notifications and alert sounds, they're delayed, which really, really gets on my nerves. And believe me, I know this is a first world problem, but believe me, I go to plug something in and only like two or three seconds after I plug the flipping device in, does it play the device connected sound in Windows? Even if there was a pop-up that pops up on the screen saying like, you know, for example, a flash drive, you plug in a flash drive and the pop-up comes up on the screen saying, hey, what do you want to do with this removable device? And only after that does it then play the uh, sound of when you connect the device, the do 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 sound, and then the Windows general notifications on it, do 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 do, and they play at the exact same time, and it really irritates the crap out of me. And I was trying to update the sound drivers, but in typical fashion, laptops never seem to go my way. See, it just did it there. Like you notice, the toast notification came up on the screen, then the sound played afterwards. Really. Why does that have to exist? What the heck is causing that? I really don't know. Because it does it when it's plugged in. It does it when it's on battery power. So it's not an issue of it being on battery power. Which I'll get onto the battery here in a little bit. But I've tried to update the audio driver. It did it again there. See, that will really... The whole audio delay thing gets on my nerves. And of course, if the audio has played recently and then you get more notifications, they're not delayed. But if it's pause for a certain amount of time it will still do that so really it's pulling a flipping waves max audio crap where it delays the audio not a big fan of that okay please bear with me with the flickering for a moment i gotta show this and answer a question people might be asking okay so then why don't you update the audio driver and believe me i've tried so here here's the audio driver and the only way to run this is this hpsetup.exe file. That's the only way I found that will run the setup. You have to run it as an administrator, of course. Now, you might be wondering to yourself, well, where's the setup file? Uh, good question. This is where it's located. This is exactly what happens. You run this hpsetup.exe file. It brings up this command prompt window. And all it does is it displays these prompts saying, waiting for X amount of seconds, press a key to continue. That's all this does. That's all that any of the driver installers that I've tried to run for this laptop do. Every single one of them will have a command prompt that displays something similar to this. And it doesn't do anything. Nothing updates. And that's what's frustrating. Except for the BIOS update. That's about the only thing I got... Uh, working properly because yeah that was an adventure off camera believe me uh, I can explain that one to you but 
every other driver just it doesn't seem to really work the hp setup.exe files doesn't work and you might be thinking to yourself, well, okay, if that doesn't work, then just do it manually through Device Manager because, you know, you got CompTIA skills on your back belt. Well, I do. But my problem is there's so many flipping folders, and I think the closest one is going to be that codec folder. Well, I tried that, and I put in the manual INF file into Device Manager. It found some real tech high-definition audio of some kind, wanted me to restart the computer after it installed. Okay, fine, let it do that. Nothing changed. Literally, it still does the exact same thing. The driver date didn't change. So obviously, I either didn't do it right or this is the newest audio driver, which I find hard to believe because the driver that's currently installed is older than the one that's listed on HP's website. So you'd think I'd want to update it. Well, I can't because that's why. So that's one thing that's really just driving me nuts so far with this laptop. I have yet to figure out why I can't get anything to work. This is the original HP OEM copy of Windows. I did do a factory reset of the original owner's crappy League of Legends install that I couldn't get off the SSD because there was no uninstaller, which is why I don't play games like that. Believe me, I don't play popular trends because sometimes they're just tricky to remove off your computer. And believe me, I tried. I tried a third-party uninstaller program. Nothing found the files. So I wasn't about to go and deleting crap only to have some Windows errors probably pop up in the future. I just cleaned it off because I didn't know, I didn't care. And so this is still technically running the HP OEM Windows 10 home image. I know I could reinstall it, but, you know, at the same time, I can't find some of the utilities that this laptop has that I would need on HP's website for full functionality, like the CoolSense utility that might be able to be gotten through the Windows store. But really, I shouldn't have to do that. So that's just kind of the rabbit hole. Uh, drivers on this machine so far are basically about as good as you would expect for a consumer-grade HP laptop. Not excellent. I don't know why this is a sore point of this laptop, because you would think it would be easy to get drivers and install them, like the aforementioned audio driver, but that hasn't seemed to have been the case, and it's just terrible. Hopefully, I can figure it out, and I can resolve that audio issue with the delay. I really hope so, because... This laptop is so good otherwise, and really the quality of the sound is great, and once it's not doing that stupid notification crap like it did like the Latitude E5470 did of mine back in the day, then I wouldn't have that issue, but I, it's just something that's really going to bug the crap out of me again and again, so I'm hoping that uh, that newer driver, if that is actually a newer driver than the one that's currently installed, I hope it fixes my issues because really... Again, if that's the case where the audio is a downer like that, that's just disappointing. However, this laptop is not all doom and gloom, of course. The touchpad's actually really nice. It's got Windows Precision drivers. It's made by Elan Tech, so obviously Linux support is debatable. But it tracks really well. It does two-finger scrolling, amazing. And it really does gestures almost as good as a Mac, I would say. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it quite on that level because this is a plastic touchpad versus a MacBook's uh, glass touchpad. So it's not fantastic, but for the price point, it's pretty good. And I would say it's almost on par with the trackpad on this Acer Aspire E15. This thing had a wonderful trackpad and it worked very well. So I can definitely give the props to this thing. The only downside it has going for it, because of course there has to be one with a Walmart special, it's a diving board mechanism and there's quite a jump in the mechanism before you actually feel a click and so if you're going to tap and click it just feels like you know you're you're on a trampoline with your finger so it's definitely a cheaper mechanism there's a lot of give to it at the bottom it doesn't have a really satisfying click to it but at least for what it's worth it actually seems like you can click almost anywhere on the touchpad but it is still diving board because it is really hard to press up at the top more so than the bottom. So yeah, obviously that's a caveat is the mechanism it uses, but really the tracking is great. Two finger scrolling is great. Gestures are great. This is a great track pad. It's just my nitpick is the clicking, but I had that complaint with my old Acer Aspire 3 way back in 2018. So really it's not even that big of a deal. I could live with that easily. So honestly, in the end, I think the 400 bucks I spent secondhand on this HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop Walmart special thing was actually really not that bad because it's got a better CPU that should hopefully age a lot better than the one in this machine over here. It uses faster memory. It has way better graphics than that thing over there. 
The display is much better quality because it's an IPS LCD versus TN, and it's got a backlit keyboard, it's got better sound for what it's worth, better cooling, and it's really not even that much bigger physically than this thing here. In fact, actually, if I close the lid, and then we'll do a bit of an impromptu size comparison between these two laptops. Uh, honestly, you would really not have any issues with this fitting it into a bag, because look at that. Well, actually, here, let me do a thing real quick. As you can see, the HP is barely thicker than the Acer, and that is with bigger dual cooling solutions in the back versus the Acer's single fan design, of course. So really, this thing is fantastic for what it is. You know, it's, it's definitely an entry-level machine, but it definitely has stuff going for it. So honestly, in the end, I know the build quality does kind of take a bit of a hit in some areas compared to the Acer. Like I mentioned, you know, the plastic... Uh, palm rest versus the aluminum palm rest on this Aspire, but nitpicks, are, they're just nitpicks. So really, I mean, post your thoughts down below in the comments about how I did. I think it's a pretty decent machine that should get me by for a little while, and I can definitely do more things on the go. Now, as far as PC video editing, I still haven't made my mind up on that, especially ever since I made my new gaming machine. So I'm still kind of on the fence about it. So obviously, for the moment, I'm still editing on Mac, but Definitely, you know, if I do end up making some kind of a switch to PC, which may or may not happen, again, it's not guaranteed yet, um, I can definitely do some video editing on this machine here for sure, especially considering that this has support for NVIDIA Studio uh, graphics drivers, which is not too bad. So for applications that take advantage of those drivers, this machine is compatible with them, which is fantastic. So anyways, so I'll probably do a benchmarking video of this machine as it sits later. So obviously get ideas to how it performs with the single channel memory, the i5-9300H and the 3 gig GTX 1050. So obviously stay tuned for that because it could be an interesting video. I've got some, actually some surprisingly good games on the way. I got GTA 5 coming along. I've got Forza Horizon 4 installed. I've got Crisis on here for what it's worth. So I'm gonna see if I can maybe even get some others on here. I've only got so much SSD space, so I gotta be careful. But I'll throw some smaller titles on here. I might try Red Dead Redemption 2, but don't quote me on that. But I might try that on here as well. I think that's going to struggle based on the graphics. Because again, it only has 3 gigs of VRAM. And it's a 1050, so it's not even that great for AAA titles anyway. It might get 30 frames a second on that game. I can't tell you for sure. But um, I don't know. If it makes it in the video, then great. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. You know, Obviously, that game is well over 100 gigs. You know, And it's going to only get larger with updates over time. So no guarantees. But uh, I, like I said, I do have GTA 5 coming on the way. So that'll definitely get tested because, of course, that's a popular title. So is Forza Horizon 4. And Crisis is just a meme. But I'll have some others in there for the sake of comparison. You might actually be surprised by some of them. This is actually a surprisingly capable laptop, even with just the 8 gigs of single channel memory. It's actually kind of shocking. And again, bid farewell to the Acer Spire E15 as it will be probably sold as of the time you're watching this video. So with that having been said, hopefully we can do some more things with the new laptop in the future. But until then, thank you all very much for coming to watch this video. If you like my rambling, because of course, you know, this is a rambly video of mine that we just finished up here. Well, then hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't like it so much, well, then the other button works as well. If you want to see more videos just like this one or perhaps more entertaining content in the future, don't forget to hit subscribe down below and click the bell while you're at it so you get notified when I upload new videos. And with that, thank you very much for watching. Catch you all in a future video.